let's talk. This is the first time I've ever really sat down and really ever done like a proper q and I asked you guys to give me any questions from personal, life, travel, GeoGuessr, any questions that you guys might have had. I'm gonna answer them today because I feel like I've never really gotten the opportunity. I'm gonna put some GeoGuessr subway surfer type content in the background to stimulate your brain as you just hear me talk. But I hope you guys enjoy and I hope I answer most of your guys' questions. All right, I just went through and like screenshot 20 to 30 that I thought were like good enough and like diverse. I haven't really thought about any of these answers so far, so I'm just gonna go through them. I think the most important question that someone asked me and it was actually the top comment was, and you know, up front right now, I think it's important to just address this very, very early. This one from Chilo Soyo. And they're saying, have you ever gotten a Snapchat from a girl? And I think, um, no, this is Thailand. <laughs> Oh my god, that sounded so much better in my head. All right, next question. Circus Joint says, what are your favorite YouTube channels that you enjoy to watch and why? What do I enjoy to watch? I think the most underrated channel on YouTube is um, a channel I actually found through Google Street View. He takes photospheres and he uploads like Nat Geo type content. Victor Posnov, I'll put the channel on the screen here, but he has a documentary around the Aleutian Islands on Alaska. It's probably one of the best videos I think that's ever been produced on the internet. Like I'm not even kidding. It's his documentary on that is a must watch for anyone that enjoys geography. He's one of my favorite channels. I don't really watch GeoGuessr content. I don't know why. Other than that, it's kind of just like travel stuff. Like Yes Theory, obviously. I don't know. It's it's mainly just I just go through my recommended after I watch things like real life lore, window over productions, things like that. I'm sure most of you guys can relate on most of those channels. Probably not too big of a surprise, but I think most underrated YouTube channel is Victor Posnov. Felipe asks, what is your highest degree of education? high school. I went to college for a year in Colorado, University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. I don't really remember what I studied or anything like that, but it was a good year. I didn't really do anything. Maybe passed one class. I've never really been a good student. Stay in school if that's for you, but I dropped out for another opportunity. I'll probably talk about it later on. Um, Benjamin asks, this is probably the most common question, is uh, how do you make your money? I don't want exact details, but are there any major income streams besides Patreon and ads, YouTube, and TikTok? You're so generous with contributions to the tournament and then don't take any donations. Yeah. So one of the most common questions you asked is like, how do you afford traveling um, i guess this will probably go into my previous thing as well yeah i mean so there's youtube youtube isn't my main source of revenue i haven't made a single dollar on tiktok or instagram i don't monetize like i'm not a creator for anything like that i have a snapchat show a youtube twitch like i don't think i make money on twitch because i spend 250 dollars on every tournament and i don't make more than a thousand dollars a month on twitch but most of my money comes from sponsorships and stuff like that or like brand posts things like that that you guys might have seen on social and then also youtube and things like this help as well i think the biggest thing to to being able to be so free with traveling and things like that is that my freshman year of college i dropped out for another opportunity in la that i ended up being i think pretty successful at yeah i was working full-time in la for like four or five years and i think candidly by like the time i was like 20 i was making a six-figure income so being successful in that really allowed me to be more free on the travel i have now because it gives me a, like a lot of a cushion that was like the initial big step. I was able to save up enough for my job I was working to be able to afford my travels initially. That was like the biggest thing. And yeah, I mean, you're probably thinking, why would you quit your job if you were like that successful? And honestly, I think that made it easier to quit my job. And you're probably thinking like, why would you quit your job if, it, if you're making that much money? And it was like pretty content. I think the problem or the thing that I always face is that I really hate complacency. And I know that sounds really dumb, especially if I'm coming from like a privileged aspect of like a secure job and income. I felt myself getting super complacent and it was like every single day was like the same. And if I had this opportunity in front of me with TikTok and Instagram and YouTube that it felt right to just quit my job and just like do something that actually made me happy. As cliche as that sounds, I wasn't very happy in LA. Um, it was like day in, day out. My like working was like my only personality trait. That's all I really was. Like I was just that. And I was just, it was just time for me to, I think, to do something for myself. So I just quit and it was honestly a pretty easy decision. I have people ask me all the time, like, do you regret quitting? No, because I'm much happier and I'm much more, I'm doing things for myself that like fulfills my like inner child now. I will take this lifestyle now versus the old one I had any day of the week because this is way more aligned with who I am and my values. So that was a long winded answer. I hope that clears up some things. Bamboo Surf said, what was your plans in terms of a career before GeoGuessr? I was already working full time. It was doing stuff on social media. I was like producing Snapchat shows. Hugo says, what is the meaning of life? I, I always want to have an answer for this, but like, I don't feel like there obviously can be. I think the meaning of life for me though, is to maximize the happiness of myself and the people around me. That's my meaning of life right now. I wake up every day, I'm like, what decisions can I make today to at least hopefully maximize my happiness or at least maximize the happiness of the people around me? If I feel like I can do any of those, that's like, I live a pretty fulfilled life, I feel like. Is it always possible? No. Do I try to do that when I can? Yes. Um, was your family always on board with you packing up to travel or were they reluctant at first? 
first. I feel like they've learned to trust after I decided to drop out and that kind of worked out. My family's super supportive of me. Swaganilla, what a great name and a cute doggy. How do you feel when people accuse you of cheating? Do you take this as a compliment or do you find it frustrating? I don't like the whole aspect of like, people think you're cheating, take that as a compliment. That just means you're so good. And that's like not something like hearing. I've said this so many times. If I saw my videos for the first time, I would be like, nah, that guy's cap. You have to be really dumb to believe this guy. So like, I like I don't care if people say I'm cheating. At the end of the day, like I, I know I'm not, so it's fine. But obviously it is frustrating at times, especially when like I try and spend a lot of time doing a challenge or something and it's just like immediately discredited. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter to me. It's it's just, it's a map game. But I don't take it as a compliment. I don't want to be called a cheater. John says, how difficult is it to move to a different country every month? Pretty easy, honestly. And that's coming from a privileged aspect as well. But I think the hardest thing about it is packing up my setup and my bags, setting up a new like laptop and monitor and your whole setup again like every month. It's kind of frustrating, but it's part of it. But all in all, it's, it's a pretty seamless process. If you want to travel, I think there's ways that you can do it with your own means. Is the way I'm doing it like pretty extensive? Yeah, probably, but I'm enjoying it so far. And obviously as like time goes on, I adapt and I find different efficiencies and things like that. But I think all in all, it's like, it's pretty easy. Blue Sky says, how do you have the courage to travel so far on your own? Seriously, it's so admirable. People always tell me, even when I like dropped out of school to like move to LA, or even when I went to school in Colorado on my own, I've always been kind of like a very autonomous person and I like to do things by myself with my own independent decisions. And I take pride in that sometimes. And people will always say like, how can you do it? Do you not feel lonely? I don't really think about it like that. What I'm doing makes me happy. So it's easy for me to do because it's aligned with like what makes me happy. And like usually that outweighs like anything else because I know it's what's best for me. And if I want to do what's best for me, then it makes that decision easier. It's actually really ironic too, because like I'm the type of guy that like goes out to restaurants. It's hard for me to even order off a menu sometimes, or even like I'm not ever gonna like walk up to someone in public and like talk to them. So when it comes to like anxiety and things like that, like I'm the last person. But like for some reason, things like this, like traveling or just kind of doing things on my own for myself, they're easier for me because it makes me happy. Which maybe I don't really know how to put that into words, honestly. To anyone that's like like on the edge of like they don't want to travel alone or things like that. That I think being able to find contentment and being by yourself is a very, very valuable thing to be able to do. You can do it. You can do it. It's worth it. I believe in you. Oh, a couple questions here. Well, let's just speed around these real quick. How long did it take you to decide to leave the US and live in a different country every month? So initially my thought was like, I just want to leave LA after I quit my job. I remember it was vividly. I was looking at apartments in like Tampa. Let me just leave LA because I was just like not really vibing with LA anymore. It was like after a tournament one Saturday and I was like in a voice call with Kodiak after. He's like, bro, why would you not just like move to like Europe or something? You have so much freedom and like you can really do whatever you want. I'm like, wait a second. Let him cook, I guess. Um, I was like, wait, why am I not? Like, it's been something I've always wanted to do. Like, why would I not just do that? And so literally within like 10 minutes, I remember on the call with Kodiak, I was like, I'm doing it. And then I just went and got my passport like the next day and like started selling everything because it was just like, why not? You know, life is too short. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And also, I think as humans, we act on inspiration. And in that moment, I felt inspired. And so I acted on it and here we are. And I couldn't be happier. Second question here is how do you decide on which country do you live in next? Well, when I was in Europe, I literally googled warmest cities in Europe in December and January and I went there. That's why I was in Sevilla, Spain and Portugal or Madeira because I just wanted the warmth after spending November in Germany. Honestly, I just go to what I feel like it sounds like a good lifestyle for me for that month. I'll also align with like places I want to see or things I've already learned about. Like Madeira was like something I thought was cool on Geogast area. It was warm. So like that'd be cool to go to Madeira. I've always wanted to go to Southeast Asia. And so I was like, let's just do the Southeast Asia tour after, you know, I've done my warm countries in Europe and then I'll go back to Europe after it's when it's warm there again and do like Norway and things like that. Number three, do you miss your family? Are they okay with you traveling? Obviously I miss my family. It's obviously not easy. You have to balance things, right? I still talk to my family you know, a lot. So next question, Scorcher Bandit says, do you think the meta parts of Geogazer are fun or an unfortunate part of the nature of the game? If there were some way to patch out all the camera and car meta, would you do it? What about the poles, ballers, etc.? cetera? I'm, I'm gonna throw my phone across this Airbnb, brother. What kind of comment is this? Would you want to get rid of poles and bollards? Okay, we need to have a talk. Let's have a face-to-face man-to-man. Three words. Meta is okay. Okay, I said it. Am I like the worst person on earth for thinking that? Yes, probably. To most people. I play the game because it's fun to learn. And once you start learning meta, it's hard to unsee meta, okay? Do I actively look out for camera blurs and things like that? No. Is it something you learn when you play the game a lot and you can't get rid of it? Yes. Also, like meta is okay. It's fun to learn meta. Like quirks of Google cars and things like that are fun. Do I enjoy 
more learning about the country and like different signage and different things like that of course is meta the devil it's not it's it's gonna be okay i promise it's it's a fortunate part of the game i think it adds a lot to the game assuming you're allowed to disclose this <laughs> oh dude this is the most common question i get asked on like tiktok it's like the meme around my videos right but dalton says assuming you're allowed to disclose this have you ever been contacted by a federal agency like the nsa CIA or fbi about your geogastric knowledge or do you worry that they might be worried about it guys i don't know if you guys know why i fled the u.s but <laughs> No, the CIA doesn't want me. The CIA has many people that are much better than me doing their job a lot better than I ever would. Okay, let's be honest with ourselves here. I literally look at Google Maps, okay? I'm not some like professional geo analyst, okay? There's people that spend years professionally doing this kind of stuff. No, the CIA has never contacted me. They probably never will. They probably laugh at the comments of some guy guessing where they are in Google Maps in 0 0.1 seconds. Can people at the CIA do that? No, it's a completely different skill set. Is there a like crossover between the skills with like, you know, where we get like geolocate different areas and things like that? Of course. but. Again, there's people in the CIA that can argue that. It's good to be self-aware, you know? There's people in the CIA, FBI, and things like that that are a lot smarter than me, okay? I, I will say though, the extent of that that people have reached out to me though is just like bounty hunters. I don't really entertain that. Chalk says, thoughts on your second channel getting more subs than your main? I don't know if any of you guys even know I even have a second channel or a main channel. I don't know if that's like a completely different audience. I don't really care to be honest. The second channel of subs are just YouTube shorts viewers, so it's completely different. People that actually watch my long-term content are on this channel, so it doesn't really matter to me. Acidic Diamond says, what is the best year guys map to get better also how much playing did it take you to get to where you are now love your content dude acidic diamond i love your content uh the best map to play is probably acw or adw no moving i always tell people to start off playing no moving because i think when people start playing they moved until they see something that they know like a domain or a flag so i always recommend playing no moving on like adw where there's more clues because you really get an idea of like what countries look like and honestly just play a lot i think i played 3,000 br games before i ever was considered good it's a patience you know there's no quick fix to, to geoguessr it's, it's you got to put the work in like anyone else. And Max says, how long would you travel around the world? I don't know, but it's probably going to be a while until I like settle down again because there's so much of the world I still want to see. I have a whole bucket list of places that I still want to see before I go back to the States and even in the States, it'll be a while. I'll, I'll probably give it like another year. Who knows? You know, it could be next month. I might get bored or something. That's the beauty of it is that I don't know. I'm just taking it day by day. I don't like planning out too many things in advance. You just kind of like go with the flow, but I should be traveling for a while in the perfect world. So Eric asks, does it bother you when people call you the guy from TikTok? talk or you just find it funny i don't mind like i don't see why that would ever like affect me i get recognized a lot in public mainly in the u.s not really as much in thailand or anything like that but when i got recognized in the states it was always you're the tiktok guy or you're the google maps guy it's one of the two do i want people to say rainbolt i don't really care it doesn't bother me the fact that we have people out here like hyped around the guy that likes geography is like the coolest thing ever like i can't complain why would i ever like be annoyed by that one time i have a plane story actually i was walking i used to go get gelato every saturday after a tournament i went to go get gelato and there's this guy in the parking lot and he goes you're the guy and nods and i go i'm the guy and i nod back and we just kept walking and that, that was like probably a top one moment of my life that was the whole interaction but i, I get that a lot you're the geogaster guy which is fine and smh haley says what is the coolest instance of seeing something geogaster related irl i think and I, I tweeted this out before and i think people thought i was like being ironic but i actually genuinely mean it traveling the world is actually like playing geogaster irl that's crazy i know but every time i go outside it's like geogaster but it's cool because you look at things like poles and things differently or like just as i walk around change my or like Bangkok or something I'm like constantly looking for metas I'm always looking for ways to make my game better in real life but I think the coolest instance was honestly just when I first landed in Germany saw my first ever like real life meta of like outside the US that was just like a German street sign or something and that was probably I'm like wow they exist and not only do they exist but they're not in gen 2 2008 blurry coverage they're in gen 4 2022 seeing the signs HD that was probably the coolest thing just because it was like the first experience of like meta in, in person but honestly every time I see like a poll or something I've learned in you guys are in real life i'm like a kid on christmas morning so it's all amazing I, I i love it it's it's one of the best parts of traveling honestly all right so those are like pretty much the most frequently asked questions i covered so i hope that was like uh, enough if you guys want more questions that i'd maybe to answer honestly just comment them below and i'll try and get to as many as i can in the comments because i know there's a ton that i probably didn't get to but honestly let me know if you guys like this because I'll, I'll do another one too if, if that's like something you guys are interested in or if there's like a lot of really good questions that maybe I didn't cover so subscribe if you're not or don't and i'll see you guys next time goodbye